you, Ezekiel. I think I recognize that piece. And uh, thank you for uh, your opening and your intro to our service of the third Sunday of Advent. And uh, we're so glad that we can be here together and we can join together even virtually and across the miles. And so good to see everyone here and welcome. And aren't we blessed that we can worship together and that we don't have to be even inside the walls of the same building, but that we can join together in spirit and uh, that we can bless one another and encourage each other with the Word of God. So thanks to Ezekiel. And we're going to have a, a, a wonderful service of worship today with Advent candles. This is the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy. So we share the joy of the Lord this day. And we're going to begin. Nikki has a word of prayer as we get started this morning. So let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Most loving and gracious God, we come to you and we are ever so grateful and humbled that you continue to call us by name, that you continue to use us in this world as your hands and feet. Oh God, we ask that you quiet the many things that weigh so heavy on our hearts and minds. We hand over our worries and our concerns, our doubts and our fears. We give to you our loneliness and our resentments, O oh Lord, and we ask that you take them and transform them and help us to see you in all of life's circumstances. God, be known to us during this act of worship, and we pray and hope that all that we say, do, sing, and think is pleasing unto you, O oh God. We thank you, and we are so grateful for this beautiful, snowy Colorado morning. God, continue to call, and we will respond. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 And I'm going to invite the children to come forward and all of you. And we also sang this song in our 6.30 a.m. service. We do a, a 6.30 service, sunrise service, we call it. Although today we did it inside by the fire because we had a, a little depth of snow here. And um, But we're doing this song. It's called, uh, Oh Beautiful Star, Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. Um, shining afar through shadows dim. So let's sing this together. It goes, Oh beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving the light for those who long have gone, and guiding the wise men. Tell the Lord, pray. 
of my favorite of the old time Christmas songs and we are marching towards Advent and uh, marching towards Christmas through Advent, this the third Sunday of Advent and now we're going to light the Advent candle as we get started and uh, we're going to sing the song today, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, as we uh, light the Advent candle, but inviting the children to come up here and we're going to light the three candles. I'll have Eden come over here and stand here. And uh, she can do the lighting. And Ezekiel, you do the music. So you can just kind of hang back. And then we'll sing the song, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Remembering the promises of God. Eden, we light the candle of hope. Get it? Ezekiel, will you help your sister? Oh, there you go. We light the candle of peace. Get it? Okay. Of peace. Ezekiel, go stand over by your mom to sing the song. You get the peace one. You get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now we light the candle, the pink one, the candle of joy. Did you get it? Hope, peace, and joy. Now, Dean, do you want to have the prayer? Sure. Now let us pray. Faithful and loving God, you will lead us from tears of sorrow into laughter as we are restored into newness, newness, newness of life. Now fill us with your joy as we await the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. Promise, God of promise, God of hope, into the darkness, our, into our darkness come. Amen. Thank you, Eden, for the prayer. And now our song, very simple, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. going to hang up here and kids come around and, and help out. We've got a special message just for you. So Eden, come have a seat right here. And as Pastor Cannon said, any kids that are out there, come join us, gather around. We'd love to have you. So I brought a sign today. Eden, what is this? Happy face. This is a happy face, right? So tell me what are some things in life that make your face look this happy? What's something? When I got sunspots. Okay, so when we got our puppy, right? What's something else that makes your face look like this? I know one for me is this morning we had some friends surprise us with a donut drop-off. Oh, donuts always make my face what, look like this. That's what I'm going to say. That's yeah, I'm now I have another question. What's this face? Sad. This is a sad face. What's something that can make you have a sad face? When boy left. Yep, yep, when our friend um, moved out of our house, that made us very sad. That's right, that made you very, very sad. Um, what's something else that can make your face look like this? I know one for me, something that can make me my face look like this is when I hear that I have friends who are sick, it can make me feel, or friends that are struggling, it can make me feel sad like this. Now, I have a question. Do you have one more thing that can make you feel sad? What's that? Well, um, when I 
when I hear about an animal dying. Mm -hmm. When you hear about an animal dying, that is very sad. You're right. Now, here's a question, because today is the third Sunday of Advent. We're getting so close to Christmas. We've been waiting so long. This is the third Sunday, and this is the Sunday of joy. Okay? So now, when your face looks like this, do you feel joy? Yes. Yes? Now, here is a big question. When your face looks like this, do you feel joy? No. No? Well, guess what? I want to challenge you because that was my first thought too, right? That when our face looks like this, when life is easy and we're happy, it's easy to feel joy, right? Because we think happiness and joy, maybe they're the same thing. And so we're happy and we're laughing and we think, wow, we're full of joy. But do you know what? Do you know even when our face looks like this, even when our heart is sad, do you know we can still experience joy? Because joy and happiness, they're not the same thing. Happiness comes and goes, right? We can be happy one minute and then someone stomps on our toe and then we're mad. And then someone brings us a donut, so we're happy. And then someone comes and slams the door in our face and we're mad, right? But joy is that no matter what's happening in the world, no matter the things that make us really sad, we can still have joy in our heart because we know that God loves us. We know that God created us. We know that God is going to be with us on our happy days and on our sad days. And so joy isn't something that just is fleeting with what's happening in the world. Joy is more something we hold in our hearts because we know God loves us so much and that God has given us so many blessings. And so no matter if our face looks like this or like this, I want to challenge us all to try to hold that joy in our heart, that joy of knowing that God loves us and will never, ever, never, ever let us go. This is the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy, because we know a baby's about to be born, the Savior of the world, that will love us and care for us and bring us grace, no matter if we're having this kind of day or this kind of day. So this week, I want to challenge us to hold on to our joy, no matter what's happening around us. Let's hold on to our joy because we know we are loved by a God that will never stop loving us. And that's reason enough to be joyful. So let's have a prayer this day. God, we thank you for these children gathered here. We thank you for the joy they bring into this world with their smile and their imaginations and their excitement. God, continue to be with them and continue to shine your light into their life so that they may know of your love each and every day. God, we thank you for this season of waiting, and we thank you for your love. Amen. Thank you, Eden, and thank you guys for joining us. Thanks, Eden. And uh, I'm going to light this candle because I think our, our pink candle has gone out, so see if we can't mm -hmm. get a little, got a little wick on it, so see if we can't get that started again. But we've come now to the time of prayer, and we lift up our prayers, and prayer concerns that we may have this day, and we're blessed that we can be here. Here, I'm going to do this like this. Watch. Well, have Ezekiel do it. Yeah. Well, we're just going to have to, we're going to get this set up. So we're going to have a prayer, and Nikki, you work on this <laughs> while we have a prayer. Yeah, this is just real life around here. You think we, we stage all this and we do it. We actually record this on Saturday. <laughs> no, this is all just kind of real life, and um, we're going to get this candle, Ezekiel, get that candle set back up for us. Just go ahead and pray. But we're going to have a prayer and uh, just remembering all those that are on our hearts this day. And, you know, this is a, it's, it's a joyous season. This is the Sunday of joy. But as we know, this is a season that this is the winter um, and a season where people have a lot of, of loss, a lot of memories of loss. Um, this is a time of illness. This is a time of stress right now for a lot of people. Tremendous stress, I think, in this holiday season. Uh, we've got... Uh, joblessness and, and other illness and fears and concerns uh, that we know of, of people that we love and uh, people in our community. Um, so we do just um, turn all these things over to God and, and recognize that these are our hard times, even as we celebrate the joy of the Lord. So Ezekiel is uh, figuring out that candle. You can get the candle back. We'll figure it out. 
And I do have a few, um, I do have a, a, two things I'd like to lift up for prayer this morning. One of them is my mom is set to have emergency surgery on Tuesday, and so prayers are appreciated for my family. Um, also, I heard this morning that a dear um, man in my life growing up, Stan Wheeler, um, passed away this morning from cancer, and Stan's family was very important to me as a child, and he was my youth sponsor, and so I just remember Stan today with joy, and I lift up his family um, and his children during this during this season. Amen. And I, I want to say also we have one of our dear friends, our Minister Emeritus, Don, you know, remains in the hospital this weekend. He's making good progress, but we do definitely keep Don in our prayers. And uh, so in any case, hopefully we'll get the, you know, this, this is going to work great. even if we don't have the, <laughs> the candle that we're going to get it done, Eden or Nikki. <laughs> but let's have a prayer and y'all stick with us and we'll get this candle lit. But let's join together and we'll have, uh, let's, let's uh, go to God in prayer. And God, we are so blessed and we do trust in you and all things. And do, God, help us to find the joy that only comes from you. This is not something that we can manufacture we ourselves. God, this is not about the, you know, are we happy or sad in life's circumstances? Or it's, it's really not about even how we feel, God, but it's about that joy that bubbles up deep inside that comes from a well, that comes from a fountain. There is a fountain, and that fountain can come up deep inside of ourselves through your Holy Spirit, by your Son, Jesus. God, how can we find that well of pure joy. How can we tap into the spirit of your son? God, help us to find the very joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. God, help us to find our strength from that internal source, that, that well that never runs dry. And not to be looking out for, for validation from things in this world, God. Help us to not, not, to, not, not to place all of our hopes on, on false promises, God, or on things that, that happen and the, the circumstances of this life, God, but help us to find that deeper hope that's rooted and grounded, that, that firm foundation that we know is in Jesus Christ, your Son, and by your Holy Spirit, and the promise of eternal life. And God, we do ask your blessing upon each one. God, we know you have all power. We know indeed all things work together for good for those who love and serve you. God, we pray that we may be counted in that number. God, we trust that we don't have to um, determine the outcome. God, we can leave the outcome up to you. God, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fear. God, help us to do the next right thing. Help us to know who we are, what is our role, what is our responsibility. And God, we do ask your blessing upon each one. And on this hurting world, God, for your healing power, God, for your reconciliation, for your peace, for the hope that we have in you, and indeed, for the very joy of the Lord. Help us to find the spirit of joy. God, help us to bubble up inside of each and every heart. God, we pray all these things in your name, and we pray even as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And aren't we blessed? And, you know, I just, I, I, some, I sometimes just feel moved to say, what a blessing that we can just turn to God at any moment. And we can have that kind of conversation. We can find that comfort and strength. We are so blessed. And, you know, I've, I've, this has been a mantra lately. If you have time to worry, you have time to pray. If you have time to worry, you have time to pray. So we can just turn. God is just as near as our very breath. And we also have this book. And aren't we blessed to have this holy book as a book? This is not just a, a dead history book. This is a guidebook for our lives. And today we're reading the same lesson. Ezekiel read this lesson also this morning. It's from... Uh, the letter to the Thessalonians. Actually, this is one of the earliest of the New Testament books, if, if you're interested, um, just in terms of when it was written. But we'll read uh, towards the back of your book. There we go. 
this little Bible towards the back of our book. We will find it, won't we? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Those pages First, stick together. Yeah, First Thessalonians and chapter 5. Uh, very good. Um, you think the preacher can just open and just falls into place, but no, it's uh, First Thess Thessalonians chapter 5. We'll begin in verse 16. Again, this is the Sunday of joy, at the joy, and the scripture says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets. But test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Again, the message, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, because this is God's will for our lives. That's the word of the Lord, thanks be to God, amen. Rejoice always, rejoice always. And, you know, that's the message for the Sunday of joy, that we are to rejoice always. And I think Nikki did a great message with the children and she had the happy face and the sad face and she said what is this message about you know is this about our, our our daily highs and lows you know every day you know we're gonna have highs and lows is this about you know this makes me happy this makes me sad or, or is it about something even deeper than that where do we find that joy that that unquenchable joy well, and I think it's, um, we have to challenge ourselves, you know, especially as these nights are getting, the days are getting longer and darker and um, Christmas is approaching and, you know, it's the happiest season of the year and it's also a very stressful season of the year and it's also a very sorrowful season of the year for a lot of people because there's people missing from the table, you know, there's people missing from the celebration and I think it's a time... You know, Advent, I think, this waiting and preparing, it's a time that we challenge ourselves to look for God, you know, to find God working in our lives and in the world because, you know, it is a hard, it's a hard season. This is one of the hardest Christmas seasons I've been through, you know, just because it's so different. You know, everything is different and that means it's exciting. It means there's opportunities for new traditions and and new things to do together, but it also means it comes with some sadness and it comes with some disappointment. And I think, you know, acknowledging that and honoring that and realizing that God's still working and that there's still, you know, reason to celebrate. The baby's still going to be born in that manger. You know, the shepherds are still going to get that visit from the angel. You know, it's the story continues. You know, God continues to work, And so I think that this scripture reminds us that even though sometimes it can feel dark, there's always something to rejoice about. There's always, God is always working. And if nothing else, if the only thing, you know, to get us started is to look in the mirror and be like, God loves me. I don't know why, but God does. You know, that's a place to begin to understand that joy, you know, that understanding of belonging. Um, that's my take that we can always rejoice because we are always loved by a God that won't let us go because it, and it says rejoice always always and then it says give thanks in all mm -hmm. circumstances mm -hmm. now that's a very extraordinary thing very to say, hard you know because yeah. I can immediately start to think of very difficult circumstances mm -hmm. and, and difficult circumstances that people are in today we mentioned some in the prayers mm -hmm. you know how do we give thanks in all circumstances you know so that really becomes you know, so that what that does is that points to this idea of joy as being something different than just, you know, a positive or a negative circumstance. Right. Because this is attached to give thanks in all circumstances. How can you give thanks in all circumstances? You know, it reminds me of people and stories of those who've gone through terrible hardships, mm -hmm. and yet they've been able to find that, that calm in the, in the middle of the storm. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I know for me, you know, how I do it is I have two or three songs that when life gets too dark, there's songs I can turn to and start singing them, and they're kind of like a prayer. It's kind of like God is whispering or sometimes banging me over the head, you know, saying, pay attention, you know. And so anytime for me when I start feeling my stomach get tight and I start hearing those words of the song in my head, I know pay attention to the song lyrics and don't pay attention mm -hmm. to the anxiety I feel I think you've got in powerful. my body. And so I think some of that is listening 
for that still small voice. It's it's paying attention when God gives us um, what I would say a morsel, mm -hmm. you know, a, a moment. You know, it's it's being it's muscle memory. You know, we sing these hymns every Sunday. You know, we hear these scriptures when we join. We have the Advent devotional we're doing every day. It becomes like muscle memory, so that when it is hard. We don't have to wonder how do we how do we find that joy. We've been practicing it. We've been practicing it when seasons were good. We've been practicing it, you know, when when things weren't so hard. So that when life does get really hard, it's a habit. It's, it's a it's, habit. It's, it's, we it's already, a routine. We're already it's there. a routine to turn to it. And so that's where I say in the morning, you know, for me, you know, we're prayer. Prayer is as close. Do we forget mm -hmm. about prayer? It's as close as the breath. How do we build that in? Where I'm not just praying in a foxhole but I'm praying as a practice. You right. know? How do I find a practice with the word that I can lean on the word and not just, you know, well, whatever's gonna, you know, whatever hook, you know, is gonna catch me by the mouth. But the, you know, that's why we talk about this as a firm foundation. You know, it's a place on which we can stand. So, and I love how you talk about the songs, you know, the songs of the faith. These are messages. How do we, how, how do we hold fast to the message? You know, despite the things that, you know, the way things appear to be. Right. Well, and I think the great thing about God, you know, one of the amazing things about grace is we're not always going to do it perfectly. And even in a given day, you know, we might we might slip up and we might, you know, lose our joy and we might, you know, give in to fear, give in to anger or give in to our resentments. And I think when we catch ourselves in that space, we stop and say, God, here I am again, you know. But I'm catching it. I'm catching it earlier this time. But we know? have to know because the God says, it says, this is the will of God in, for our lives. You know, our God is for us to be people of joy in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. We have, we carry that joy with us. Now, I've got a friend, I say, well, your joy or your peace is like the, your pearl, you know. Mm -hmm. You've got to hold on to your pearl. You think of Jesus' parable of the pearl of great price. Right. And she sold everything so she could hold on to that pearl. And my friend, when she loses her peace, she says, I've lost my pearl. Mm -hmm. And she says, I see my pearl going running, you know, rolling down the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's our joy. You know, how do we hold, because it says this is the will of God for us. You know, it doesn't say the will of God for us is, you know, well, that we elect a, a Democrat or a Republican. It doesn't say anything about that. It says the will of God for us is that we have joy and we give thanks in all circumstances. In all circumstances. Right. Well, and I think if, you know, I've been alive longer, it's becoming longer and longer every day. And for me, you know, when I when I start feeling too dark, I have people too that I can call that I know have been through really, really, really dark and hard times that I haven't been through yet in my life. And I can call them and say, How did you keep your joy? You know, how did you, you know, how did you make it through this time? And those the the saints, you know, I call them saints in my life or just people that have been there, you know, can say, Well, here's how I did it. And I think that's why we are in community with one another. It's why we need to be in relationship with one another. It's why God created us that way. So that when I'm down, when I can't find my joy, you can come along and say, let's find it. You know, let me help remind you and vice versa. Because this is a hard world we're living in. You know, it's not an easy road. You know, it's not every day isn't lollipops and rainbows as you like to say. You know, and so I think that God gave us one another and God gave us creation, and God gave us that still small voice, you know, to remind us that even in the darkest of times, God is shining a light. Well, and it takes, you know, that's and the theme our throughout joy, this season. It takes, you know, with how will we see the small light if it wasn't for the darkness? That's so right. That's what this season of Advent is about. Well, and I think knowing that that little light shines in the darkness, that brings our joy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never totally dark mm -hmm. because there's always a light. But this shining. idea, you know, we started out the whole season, keep awake. How are we trying to pay attention right. to that? But that's the source of our hope, you know. Right. So wait, what a message. You know, what a message. The Sunday of joy, our joy comes from the Lord, Right. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. You know, so much that we say in the Bible, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> I tell you what, you know, so much that we say in the Bible. And aren't we blessed? That's where we can find our strength. So now thanks be to God. Amen and amen. And we're going to sing a song of joy as we leave uh, this place here. And this is kind of a different song that, um, pardon? We have communion. 
Well, I think we sing a song before right. communion. So this is the time if you, um, while we're singing the song, okay. if you haven't yet gotten your elements together, okay. um, now is a great time to do that during yeah. the song. So the come song. on up, and this is a song that we don't often sing. I think I'll write that up. My, my kids remember this song. But it's just reminding us of what this journey is about. It says, how far is it to Bethlehem? It goes, how far is it to Bethlehem? Not very far. Shall we find the stable room lit by a star? Can we see the little child? Is he within? If we lift the wooden latch, may we go in? May we show the creatures there on sass and sheep? chance you get your communion elements together. Uh, we're using graham crackers and milk. We have that privilege here in our tradition. And uh, Nikki's got a message for us as we approach God's table of grace. So over the last 48 hours, just alone, I heard of um, a church member um, who is struggling with COVID. I learned of a friend who had passed. I learned of my mom's knee for surgery. I learned of a colleague in ministry and someone that I used to serve at church, um, the same church he did, whose son was just diagnosed with lymphoma. It was a heavy 48 hours of hearing various news, and I bet all of you listening could list the hurts um, that you heard over 48 hours as well. Because it's a dark season and it's a hard time, and there's a lot of people struggling, and, and it's, a, it's a heavy season of grief. And yet we know that in the midst of the darkness, when our days are heavy, um, when it feels like there's more bad news than good news being shared in the world, we know that we as Christians, our hearts are still filled with joy because we come to this table each week to be reminded that we belong to a community so much larger than ourselves so much larger than our family of origin, so much larger than even our hardest and darkest of stories we've lived through. We belong to a community that is led by God that will not and cannot let us go. Our lives are led by grace, we're surrounded by forgiveness, and at this table, we remember that we have nothing to fear that we have no worries because no worry is greater than the love of Jesus Christ and no worry is greater than the forgiveness that we have found at this table. So we come to this table today. Maybe your heart is sad. Maybe your heart is lonely. Maybe you feel lost and alone and afraid. Come to the table and eat the bread and drink the cup of joy. Come and experience the joy that can only be found 
through God's grace and God's love. Come to the table just as you are, knowing that you are loved, that you are forgiven, and that God loves you so much just because you're you. Come to the table with hearts full of joy. Come to this table of love. Amen. Amen. And we have come to the most sacred part of our service of worship this day. And always, each time we gather, this is the, the center, or this is the, the final act of our service of worship. What we do as Jesus commanded us when he said, do this each time you gather in remembrance of me. So we do recall each time we come to this table of grace, we remember that day so long ago when Jesus was there and gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And the scripture tells how he first took the bread. And he gave, th give, gave thanks, the scripture says. And he blessed it. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And likewise, the scripture teaches how Jesus took the cup it says it was after supper that he took it and he, he shared it with his disciples and he said to them, this cup is the new covenant in my blood that is shed for the forgiveness of sin. Take this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God this day and always. Amen. Nikki, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation shed for you. Canaan, the body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of joy poured out for you. Canaan, I mean Eden, <laughs> the body of Christ broken for you, and the cup of joy poured out for you. Now, Eden takes a big piece. <laughs> she must have had a hard week. <laughs> and we've got also for you, a body of Christ, the, the, the cup of salvation, broken for you, shed for you. Take and eat, take and drink. Thanks be to God this day and always. Amen and amen. Amen. And aren't we blessed? And I'm just grateful. I want to say thanks. I'm grateful that we have our, our kids and their participation here and uh, Eden's spirit and Ezekiel's hard work. And Ezekiel gets up in the morning and helps me out and all day. And he blesses us with his music. So don't we have a lot to be thankful for? And also a lot that's going on right now in the life of the church. Um, different things, different surprises that we have for this season to make this a, a fun season. And uh, we've got our Advent devotions, Nikki mentioned. You know, let's keep up with the Advent devotions. We're putting an outdoor nativity outside the church. That'll be finished up today in the building on Cherry Creek South Drive. So go by and check it out. Lots of surprises, things. Check out our website, different ways we can get together, find fun opportunities for fellowship. And great to be with you. Let us know what we can pray for. We do pray a lot of things in the family of the church. Uh, Lady do does have a, a COVID diagnosis I spoke with and a number of things. So uh, let us um, know what we can pray for. And we're going to go out with this song, which I think is kind of cool. As he thought I did this this morning because I saw three ships. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day. All three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, and what was in the ships? All three on Christmas Day in the morning, in our Savior Christ and His Lady. On Christmas Day, on Christmas Day, our Savior Christ and His Lady. On Christmas Day in the morning, and let us all rejoice and day. I 
some that we may not know that we remember, but we remember, you remember that one, don't you? Um, so we're so blessed, and Ezekiel's going to lead us out with some music. But let's go out now with a benediction, and uh, we'll say happy third Sunday of Advent to you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And now let's go out, and I'll say may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and always, through Jesus Christ our Lord this day. Thank mm-hmm. you.